Today, I'd like to share with you an exciting new method that will bring in as many patients as you like. It turns on the new patient faucet, and you get as many as you like whenever you want. Here with me today is John Howard of JNS Marketing. John? Thank you, Dr. Retner. Um, I think the most important step in any marketing plan is to target your market. That is, you need to determine who you want as your clients or patients and focus your marketing directly at that market segment. You mean the way an attorney might just go after the personal injury market? Well, exactly. Now, in the case of a chiropractor, I think you need to consider patients who will come to you on a regular basis, not just when they're in an accident or when they're in severe pain. Oh, that is a very important part of any practice. Well, yes, it is. But I think you need to consider also that segment of the market who will come to you on a regular basis, those who value chiropractic as a regular part of their health care needs, and who will schedule appointments for their family on, like an example, on an ongoing basis, just like when you make your dental appointments well in advance, whether or not you have any cavities. That's right, John. I realized that I couldn't depend on whiplash and other types of emergency care as the mainstay of my practice. Not only that, I realized that I wanted a patient base that really cared about their health and fitness, not just people who came to me in pain because their lawyers said they should. So I decided to target the new age market, the people who I realized would be open to non-traditional and holistic techniques, who are also actively looking for an alternative to drugs. And how has that worked for you, doctor? Better than I ever expected. And now that I've been taking my seminars on the road, I've come to realize that there's a strong new age base in virtually every part of the country, not just here in California. Well, you're right, doctor. The new age movement and a wider appreciation for alternatives to traditional medicine has really grown throughout the United States. Now tell me, how did you market to this audience? I realized that the way to reach them was to heighten their awareness of chiropractic as an alternative and to create a space that was safe for them to come in for a first visit. After that, it was easy to keep them coming back. Well, that's the key to any successful strategy. Heighten their awareness and get them to try the service. Then if you're satisfied, well, of course they'll continue. But how did you accomplish this, doctor? As I looked into the new age market, I realized that they're willing to spend money on something they value, but they don't spend it foolishly. They need to feel comfortable that the chiropractor they go to shares in the values they believe in. They want someone who cares about them as people first. Someone who is open to a variety of healing techniques, not just force adjustment. Someone aware of the importance of a holistic approach to healing, who can offer them a broader level of care than a specialist who sees disease only in terms of their specialty, like a surgeon who will only see surgical solutions. They want someone to consider which solution is really best for them and make sure they get the kind of help they need. Hmm. Well, I think that's really a growing trend. And people don't like to be pigeonholed. They need to be appreciated for who they are first as a person, not a case to be treated. Exactly. And they also need to feel secure in their choice. They need to see for themselves exactly what I'm about and what I have to offer. And once you get them in the door? Once they come to see me, I can establish the level of trust to keep them coming back. Oh, that's great. So tell me, doctor, though, how do you get them in the door? The most important factor bringing these new patients is my direct mail advertising. It directly targets the new age patients. Oh, the returns on direct mail advertising are typically very low, especially when you're dealing with a service business in a particular geographic area. Now, how do you do it, doctor? By zip codes? No. I tried the zip code mailings, and that's exactly what I got. Zip. <laughs> I realized I had to focus my marketing, and it made all the difference. I purchased and rented mailing lists from a variety of New Age sources and sent my New Age mailings directly to those people I knew would be interested. Now, where did you get these mailing lists? That's some smart marketing, Dr. Retner. So tell me, what exactly do you put in the envelope? It's not only who you send it to, it's what you send them. You don't want the envelope to end up in the round file. So I use business window envelopes. And blue, <laughs> that's pretty smart. Blue is a color that's calming and inspires confidence. Now what else does the package include? I found that sometimes it takes more than just a freebie to get their interest, so I include this letter. Hmm. It's designed to focus the patient's awareness on the need for chiropractic care, whatever they do. When was the last time you felt really great? The best part is that even one or two new patients will more than pay for the mailing. With me here today is Zoe Davis, the owner of a local New Age bookstore. Tell me something about your bookstore. Oh, well, we've been um, a bookstore for nine years, going really? on nine years, actually. Great. Yeah, yeah, we're very proud of that. And what kind of customers do you cater to? 
Well, you know, we started off fulfilling a niche uh, for New Age, alternative knowledge, and uh, Eastern tra traditions. But um, since New Age has become so mainstream, uh, that fine line between that and your commercial books have um, become grayer. We've expanded. So we're a full-line bookstore now. Oh, great. Yeah. And uh, tell me about your New Age section. What are the popular titles? And do you carry any music, New Age music? Right oh, there? all of it. All of it. We carry all the popular titles. And uh, Deepak Chopra, Dr. Deepak yeah. Chopra, is most popular now. He's recently been on public television um, with uh, health and certainly the cancer issues, especially for women. Uh, Dr. Bernie Siegel is uh, all his books uh, we carry. And what about the community? Do you have any interaction with the community at all? Oh, definitely, definitely. That's our, our uh, in the last three years, we've uh, opened up a community room. It's at the back of the store. Uh, and we carry out uh, book signings, which is very typical. But then we do very unusual things, like um, trying to get speakers uh, on related subjects that are really popular with our uh, book sales, and have them come in and share that knowledge, and, and even yoga classes. And uh, we're dabbling into a little meditation occasionally here and there. Well, good. Maybe I could come and speak. Oh, that would be great. Time. That would be great. That was really interesting, Dr. Retner. I liked the way you got involved with her and you found out that you could use her community rooms for your seminars. You know, by getting involved with her bookstore activities, you really established a good rapport. Thank you, John. I enjoy a good bookstore and see it as a valuable resource to our community. I think that establishing a good rapport is an important element in developing a strong business alliance. I like to think of my business allies as friends and maintain a feeling of mutual respect. Well, it seems to me that you need to foster and maintain these alliances over time. Yes, I found this to be true. And the more business I send to them, the better we both do. Well, that's probably particularly true when you're dealing with an individual such as a massage therapist who will see each of your patients in person. It is. In this next interview, I'll be talking with Sandy Johnston. I haven't had the chance to work with her yet, so you'll see us explore some possibilities for the first time. Hmm. We're here today with Sandy Johnston, who's a massage therapist. We're going to be discussing business alliances, how we can build each other's practice. Great. Have you ever worked with a chiropractor before? Well, yes, I have, actually. I, I've um, referred people to a chiropractor before. In the case where if they have a bone out in their neck, if I'm massaging someone's neck and I can feel that there's a bone out, or if I can see that there's a bone out of place in, in the back, or um, if they have some lower back problems, I would refer to a chiropractor. OK, great. And the other time when it's really good to refer to a chiropractor is when they have a sharp pain in the lower back like sciatica and that's mm -hmm. not responding to mm -hmm. massage therapy. I think that's a very important aspect of this type of business alliance. Maintaining it through appropriate referral. Matching the patient needs with your allied resources. Yes, it also helps me to refer to a range of massage therapists rather than just one or two. Oh, I see. So by sharing the wealth, so to speak, you can acquire a larger referral base. I mean, now, what other kind of business alliances would you consider? There are actually quite a number of good business alliances. When the patient is seeking care that isn't within their area of expertise, or when proper treatment requires special training. I think it's important to maintain healthy alliances with your peers to know what they have to offer and what their strengths are. Well, it seems like you have a very balanced approach to competition within the community. I believe that the patient's best interest is the most important thing. Is there anything else? Yes, there's one more thing. Prepare your office for a flood of new patients. Make sure you have plenty of new patient forms and stock up on your x-ray film. You'll be needing it. Well, Dr. Retner, I've really enjoyed this discussion today. I think that anyone who follows your prescription for new patients can't help but succeed. I'd like to think so. Thanks for joining me. My pleasure.